So, we'll, uh, we looked at some basic continuous valued random variables. Okay, three uh, random variables we looked at. One is the uh, continuous uniform, uh, uniformly distributed random variable. The next is the exponentially distributed random variable. And the third is the uh, Gaussian or normal random variable. Uh, we will look at, uh, in the last lecture we looked at how the, uh, the various probability measures of events okay, or the random variable taking values in certain range can be computed for Gaussian random variable using a table. So we will again look at that one. First let x be the Gaussian or normal random variable. So how do we denote it? X n, n is the symbol that we use, mu and sigma square. Where mu is interpreted as the mean or expectation sigma square varying. Sigma standard deviation. So you have to be very careful when you are given this kind of a notation. They normally we only use the notation mu and first parameter is the mean and the second parameter is the variance. Okay? Sometimes in some notation the second parameter is given as the standard deviation. If you are given like this, it's obvious that sigma is the usual notation for standard deviation. Sigma squared for the variance, there is no confusion. But suppose you are told x is n 1 comma 4, what do you make out of it? Is it a this is a normal random variable, mean is 1, and what did they mean by putting a 4 here? Did they mean a variance or did they mean a standard deviation? That is very important. You have to you have to stick to the in a particular notation and then follow it. We will use as far as possible, unless otherwise mentioned, that the second parameter is the variance and not the standard deviation. So, the variance is for standard deviation is true for this Gaussian random variable. So, that is what we will try to follow earlier. So, it will not be given. This is a point. Well, so if you have this uh, random variable, then we saw that the uh, Density function will take the form 1 over root of 2 pi sigma squared into e power of minus 1 by 2 x minus mu to the 4 square by sigma squared. This for all range of x. So this is what Gaussian can take for the entire, the support is the entire real axis. And the full idea distribution function is I can put it in this way. So if you want to evaluate at x, so integrating all the way from minus infinity to x, the density function. So that is the uh, CD. Well, so if you want to evaluate this, this integration is not something for a given value you cannot easily do. That is why we need to uh, stick to a table. It's, it can only be done numerically cannot be done analytically. So we have to adhere to numerical techniques to find these kind of these values. Or similarly if you like for example uh, probability that x lies between a and b is nothing but a to b plus the effect. So for all these things over particular interval or CDF or CCDF or anything like that we have to evaluate this kind of an interval. And it cannot be done analytically, numerically we have to do it. So for different values of mu, sigma and all, how do we do it? We cannot have lots of tables, one for each possible values of mu, sigma and so on. 
That is why what we do is we always convert the a given random normal random variable to an equivalent standard normal random variable and find the this probabilities in terms of the probability measures of standard normal random variable. That becomes easy. For example, if x is normal with mu comma sigma square, then let us do a transformation. Let us define a random variable y which is x minus mu by sigma. Then y will be standard normal. But what we mean by standard normal is mean is 0, variance is 1. Okay, we will see how is it. If you put 3 of x, that is what we have to take an expectation. This is only a constant 1 over sigma into 3 of x minus mu. This is equal to 0. E of x is the same as mu. And variance of sorry, y. Okay? E of y is 0. And variance of y is 1. So we have to take variance of x by sigma minus mu by sigma. Again, we can uh, separate the variance can be some you can do it. And uh, this is constant, variance of a constant is 0. And you have this is 1 over sigma, a times, you can take it as a times x. Not the same, this is a different x, okay? It's not one, we can put it as z. Okay. So, this we know this one. So, we can use the same formula. So, so this becomes 1 over sigma squared in the variance of x, which is not a sigma squared, so it becomes 1. So y is sorry. So we can always transform x to a standard normal, normal random variable using this transformation. Okay. So what we can do is let us say look at for y how we can do. What will be f y of y? The same formula we have to use for the density function. For mean you put 0, variance you put 1. 1 over root of 2 pi 1 1. I am leaving it. E power of uh, y minus 0 by 1 the whole square 1 by 2 is also there. So it is nothing but minus y square by 2. So this is what it will be. So this is how the density function of y will be. And the CDF will be of SDF, standard normal uh, random variable will look like. Well, so what we do is, this has been computed numerically and the table has been arrived at. Okay? And whenever we want to compute the uh, probability measures of a standard normal random variable, we can consult the table and make use of it. That is what we can do. It is not only for standard normal, it is only a special case. For any normal random variable, you can find it using the table. So, uh, in the last lecture, I showed the table. Okay? Uh, sometime when I get an opportunity, when I project it, I will show it again. But it is there in the books. I will tell you there are two kinds of tables that are available. One, this is the CDF of standard normal, uh, standard normal. Uh, Variable, not a variable. The CDF is usually denoted by this symbol. Okay, this sign is being used. Of course, you can put a random variable for which it stands for. So when we say this one, this is nothing but the CD. Okay. Uh, instead of putting f x of x, this is how it can be used. So for this one. 
these things, the, the CDF, the CIFX products for STN are available in table form. So if you want, you can just consult the, how the table will look like this. Again, it will not be there for full of those things. For X, only on the positive side, 0 to from 4, it will be available. So again, how it will be put? Like logarithmic table, 0 will be there. In terms of 0 0.1, 0 0.2 to 0 0.9 will be there. And then it will go like 1, 2 and so on. It will go like this. It will be a table of this form. Okay. For 0, if you want, you can just look at it. 0.5 you can find it here. 0 0.9, 1, something like that you can do. And all the way up to 4, it will be there. 4.9 will be here. Something like that. Okay, you can just look at it and you will be able to find the CDF for positive values of x. If you want to find for the negative value of x, you can easily do it. Okay. So, how we can do it is as follows. So, what this figure? For x positive, suppose x is a uh, value which is always positive, okay. if you want to indicate a negative one, you have to put minus x. This one will give you this area. Okay. So for x can be found out from the table. This is what probability that x is less than or equal to x. That is simply which is obtained from the table for x positive. Suppose you want to find probability that x is greater than x. It is the complementary cumulative distribution function, which is equal to 1 minus consider the table, find this CDF. 1 minus that will give you this problem. So these two you can find. And then probability that x lies between A and B is nothing but okay. This means that find these two from the table, subtract it, the larger from the smaller, you will get the probability in any given range. So, if you are consulting a table that gives the CDF of the standard normal variable, you can do this. Okay. Well, suppose there is one more thing that will be available. Instead of giving these values like this, minus infinity to y, there is one more function that is being defined, which is called as the error function. of x. It is defined as 1 over root of 2 by 0 to x e power of minus u squared v to u. What we do is we only integrate from 0 on not from minus infinity. So only that part of integral evaluation is defined as the error function. So, let me look at how will the error function look like. This is the CDF for the same x. This gives the CDF. If it's a error function, it will only give this. One. Yes. So how are they related? because this Gaussian is always uh, symmetrical about the mean for a standard normal okay we are talking about standard normal for standard normal uh, mean is 0 so for uh, 
uh, you are iterating not from minus infinity to x. If you do it, you get c d f. From 0 to x, you get the error function. This part is always half. So, half plus error function will give you c. So, this is how they are related. You can always find it. Then what? Uh, we will just look at the That is probability that the x is less than or equal to x is the psi x of the x. In terms of error function, is 1 plus This is what we are trying to tell. How? Because let's we always let's have this in our mind. For some x by error function of x, this area and from that other things can be found out. What is probability that x is greater than x? These are all for the value of x which is a positive one. This is, you want this a area, that can be nothing but, you know this side also it is half, so it is half minus yeah. So what we are trying to do is, where is that? If you are consulting the CDF table, you use these formulas for everything, CDF, CCDF, or any interval. These are the only three different things. If you are consulting error function table, CDF, CCDF, you can do it like this. This is for positive x. Property that x is less than or equal to minus x. Okay? That is, x is positive, I am indicating a negative value by minus 2 or something. Then what we are looking at is so the same x, this is minus x. I am looking at this area. Okay? This, both these areas are same. I have to find half minus error function. And probability that x is greater than minus x is this function, this area, here function of x plus r. And probability that x lies between, okay, um, well, uh, minus x. And plus x. Is how much? Yes. Two times. Because what? This side up to x, it is the other function, this is symmetrical, so it is two times this.
not variance, standard deviation of the is 20 millimeters. By the way, how do we this? I don't know whether I mentioned it. Let me, it's a good that we will also do these things. So for a standard uh, normal or any uh, Gaussian random input, we saw the bell shaped curve like this. Okay. So this is mean mu. Standard deviation will have one value. What we will do is we will put, we will mark mu plus sigma, mu plus 2 sigma, mu plus 3 sigma and so on. Okay. Well, so it will so happen that if you want to find the property that x lies between, sigma. This is of the order of 64 or 64 percentage or 0 0.6. That is 64 percentage, 6.64 of the property gets concentrated in plus or minus sigma. And for 2 sigma, I think you can find it is 95 or so, 94 or 95. So between these two, it's actually figure is not right, it will be even more here. 94 percentage of the probability will be here. And 3 sigma is about 99 or so. And then 4 sigma, 6 sigma and all 99.999 and so on. Something happens like this. So which means that, uh, that the probability that you will find a normal variate to lie between within one, one, one sigma around the mean is 64 percentage, two sigma is 94 percentage and so on. So most of the thing will be, be will lie between okay. So which will give an idea that let's say if you are told that 60 and this one uh, oh, there is a 60 percent, uh, 64 percent chance that the rainfall will be between 40 and 80 and so on. That is how you can interpret it. That is you can also, you would have still, uh, looked at the, um, for things like you know, say 3 sigma in quality assurance and so on. People try to give a assure a quality which is in the range of 3 sigma, 6 sigma and all these things you would have seen. Which uh, they are trying to tell is the, uh, the probability of rejection will be very less. 1 minus 0.999 something else. That is why in terms of the sigma they do. Well, so what does this mean? Uh, how do we find it? Okay. For that, okay, the probability that, so suppose I want to find that the rainfall is between, uh, taking the same thing we will just find, try to find out. If you want to find this one, okay, uh, or you want, we can get 50 and 90. This one we know. This is what we want to find it. You know, this is how it is. How do we compute? We cannot easily compute. We don't have a table for this arbitrary mean and deviation. You only have for the standard one. But you do the conversion. That is, C of 50 minus 60. Okay? Oh, sorry, it's not just like that. Okay? And then, divide by 20. Like that you can do. So that, you can see that this one will be minus 0.5, right? Then I to, this is what? This would be a standard normal distribution. 
this will be uh, that 3 by 2 1 point five, like that. So you can always convert the probability measures of interest to you for an arbitrary Gaussian random variable in terms of the probability measures for a standard normal one and then consult the table and then So that is the basic idea. Then we will talk about joint period. So we, let's say we have two random variables x and y. We want to define, we want to specify it together because they may have a dependency, they are related and so on. They may be independent but we don't know. We want to specify it together. Then how do we do it? For that we have to specify the joint probability. If it is a discrete one, we have told. One may be a coin tossing, another may be throwing up a die. Probability that you will get a get along with a number 4 of the die. Like that. Together, what is the combined probability? Joint probability. For the discrete random variable, joint PMF will do. For a continuous one, we use the joint property density function. That is, we just ask that property that x, okay, uh, uh, how do we uh, write this one? F is symbol. Because it is joint, we put both x and y here to specify the joint. The first parameter in this one is the uh, variable or the value or the realizations of the first random variable x. The second parameter is the realizations of the second random variable y, x comma y. Like that you have to see. So this is how the notation that you will, you will be using for the joint probability density. For the joint cumulative distribution function, Similarly, capital M, x, y of x comma y. How the interpretation of this would be rather easy. Is what? If it were fx of y, it is probably that the random variable x is less than or equal to small x. So you have to do both. It's a joint one. Both condition needs to be satisfied. So this is nothing but probability that x is less than or equal to x and y is less than or equal to y. That is what we call as the joint cumulative distribution function. Okay. Then to get the density function what we can do is we assume that this CDF is uh, well behaved one. Okay. Then We expect these two will be connected using this notation. Okay. And given this one, how do you find the various one? What are the uh, properties that you would expect it to be fine? And so on. That is one thing. And uh, another thing is, okay, we will come to these things later. Okay, is that is it has to be normalized. That is.
the point x come out. And if you want to find the uh, probability that x, y together is an element of a, that is, there is an uh, uh, area okay, in the uh, range of values taken spanned by x and y. You want to find that x and y fall within this area. Is that what you have to do? You have to integrate over this area dx and y. This is what we mean. That is, probability that the x and y random variable falls in a subset of the support of x and y, which we call it as a. Then we have to integrate it over whatever the area that condition that you are uh, giving. So from that, how we can write? Did we write that one? Uh, yeah, we we have wrote uh, this one. We can we have written it. Uh, yeah, we can write this one. Yeah, x y of x comma y is integral minus infinity to x. That is the CDF at x comma y is nothing but the density function integrated from minus infinity to x minus infinity to y of u v. So, so these are all, it's a that generalization of the concepts of the uh, ordinary CDF PDF to join to. You can also extend it to many variables. And so all it all be very similar to this. Okay. So yeah. Then we will talk about uh, yeah. we are trying to do. Only x has to be 
uh, restricted within small s. So this is equivalently nothing but the effects of x. Is this series of x only we are asked? Because we are not, we are allowing any value of y to be taken. So that will be nothing but minus infinity to x. And this one. You know that the effects of x is nothing but the effects of x, x effects of b into d. This is just because this is the definition of CDF of x and the then the CDF of x and the PDF of x are related by this one. This means that this should be equal to this. So what we are trying to tell is, if you want to get the individual density function of x from the joint density function of x comma y, what I have to do is I have to integrate out y, integrate y over its entire range. Then you will get the individual density function. We will call this also it is called density function because we have been specifying joint density function. We will call this as the marginal density function. So the marginal density function of x can be obtained from the joint distribution density function by integrating out the variables that you are not interested. You can extend the concept. For example, I want fx of uh, y from the three variables x, y, z. Okay, U, V, W, now you can put it. So what you don't want, you integrate. Okay. So you will get the corresponding uh, marginal density by integrating out the variables that is not of interest. Okay? And then uh, that we have time. Let's say you have this is the sample space omega and you have defined a random variable here. What is it? For every sample point it maps to uh, some value x in this Property measure is given and so on. So accordingly we have the density function f x of x in you have computed it and you can work with x, find any of this. Now, you are now given an additional information that an event has occurred when you conducted, you, uh, when you conducted a random experiment, an event has occurred, that is known. You don't know the exact sample point that has come as other things. An event has occurred. We will call that event as A. Now, with this knowledge, are conditioned that the event has occurred, what will be the density function of x? Is the question. That we will give us, denote it as conditional PD, probability density function of x. Original density function is known. Now a condition is being told. It can, there can be different kinds of condition. In general, we will call condition that an event has occurred. Then, with this condition, can you redefine or recompute or refine your understanding by finding the conditional property density function? Will it be the same or can it be different? It can be different because, for example, I may have a case that these events are all mapped to a particular range of values of the x-axis. And outside these things, it maps to some other point. Now, if I am asked what is the probability that the value of realization will be in this interval, it will be zero. Because moment you are told that this event is the one which has occurred, it only maps to those range. Outside the range, 
it cannot take the value given it with the condition being told. So those probability densities will be zero. Probability density will change. So those things will become zero. And these are allowed. But the limit might say it may not because normalization condition has to be okay. And so on. So it will be different. So how do we denote it? Yes, x given a of x is the notation that we use. That is the density function of the random variable x conditioned on the even yeah, a is the conditional density function of x given a. So this is what we are trying to find. Well, first of all, this is a value. Once we find out this one, this function will be a valid density function, which means it has to obey all values, all properties. We will see how it is. Suppose you know that f of x given sigma of x is equal to f x of x. That the, it's, it has to be in the sample space. That is what I already know. I know that. You don't need to extra give it. So it is uh, giving the f x of x. OK? So uh, and so then how do we uh, specify this? How do we? Continuous one in the next 
So let's say x is Poisson with a parameter alpha. What do we mean? Property that x equal to k is e power of minus alpha, alpha power k by k factor. That k is equal to 0, 1, 2, e power. Then, this is the original density mass function of Poisson. Now I want the conditional PMR. Condition being the number of f k is e. Okay, that is probability that x equal to k given e is what we are looking for. But this is not so straightforward as this one. You just cannot. Uh, you cannot say probability of even is equal to probability of odd and then divide it and so on. It may not also. You don't even know. So this is what we want to find. How do we find it? Sigma k even is uh, over e power minus alpha alpha power by k factor is one thing we have. Sigma k or e power of minus alpha, alpha power k by k factor. Or let us say the two summations for even one, odd one. Okay. So uh, I will call this as um, what a b equal to factor a. This is a factor b, not even, just factor. We know that a plus b equal to 1. Okay. If we want to find a minus b, how do we find it? Uh, I can find it like uh, even and then this one can be written as e power of minus alpha okay alpha for k by k factor right? not even so minus one for k If I want to find a minus b, I have to, for all those things, I have to give minus 1. I am subtracting all of these terms from these terms. Okay? So I can put minus 1 power k because all of them are k is odd. So everything will be minus minus. I can take the minus out. So it will be minus b I will get, which I will add it to k. So I can write a minus b as like this. Right? Where what is this one? This is summation over all k, k 1 to 0 to infinity. Okay? That will give you a minus b. Then 2a is what? Okay, what is this first of all? What is this one? e power of minus alpha sigma over all equal minus alpha power k by k factorial. That is equal to this is e power of minus alpha, e power of minus alpha that is equal to e power of minus 2 alpha. So, if you add these two, 2a two will be, this is 1. a plus b, this is in the even plus odd is 1. 1 plus e power of minus 2 alpha. So, a is equal to 1 by 2 into 1 plus e power of minus 2 alpha. So, what we are trying to find is probability that k is even is this quantity. Okay. That that comes because although even or not, because see these factors will change 0, 1, it will be that is why it is not just off. Property of even is not equal to property of uh, off. So this is what we get. So what do we do? What is property of k given uh, this one? Property of x equal to k into even divided by property of even. So only for those cases, cases which are given, this one is nothing but probability of x equal to k. As long as k is even, these two conditions implies x equal to k only. So what you are doing is, for x equal to k, those properties are not altered excepting for a factor which is 1 over probability of even which is just used for normalization and 
for K or this condition is cannot be over, so it is zero. So the probability of x equal to k given even, that is the conditional property is just this for this and this. So finally, how do we write it? What is this one? e power of minus alpha, alpha power k by k factorial and divided by this factor. So I will put 2 here. Here I will put 1 plus e power of minus 2 alpha. This is for k even. 0 for k or This is how we can uh, find the conditional problem. Do you have time or? Oh, it was. Okay, we will stop. So.